So in a previous video, we took a look at working with clip versions in Studio One. This, this is the same session that I used during that video. If you haven't watched that video, I'll make sure to include a link in the description above. But we talked about a few different things. And one thing I want to put the focus on in this video is with respect to uh, how Studio One handles clip versions and any event that you've used band markers. So this is the same session that we have that we used in the last video. I'm going to hop over to another session. Now this has to be one of my most popular videos that I've ever done, and it has to do with beat detective style drum slicing in Studio One. So this is the actual Studio One song that I used for that video. It's gotta be two years ago now. Now if we take a look at this arrangement, basically we have two different sections. We have the first part, and I'm gonna give a credit to Andy Selway for making uh, these drum tracks available for me to use for this video. Take a listen to the first part. Okay, now let's move over to bar 17. So these two different parts of the arrangement, they're distinctly different. So let's split the arranger track and I'm gonna right click and let's name this, for example, just for sake of demonstration, we're gonna call this chorus. Now in addition, let's also give it a completely different color in terms of the arranger track. Now when you're editing drums, especially when you're using slicing workflows, it's a really good idea to work in bite-sized sections. So for example, if I was gonna eat a huge sandwich or a pizza, I wouldn't try to put the whole thing in my mouth. I would you know, take a bite of a slice at a time and I would work in sections. So if we take this same concept and we apply it to drum slicing or quantizing using the slicing method, in terms of having a, an arrangement section that we're just working in one particular spot, this can be useful. This is especially the case when you talk about different styles of performances for, for example, the verse, and then we have the chorus. So I'm not going to repeat anything that I did in the drum slicing workflow video. If you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link in the description and do check that out. It's very detailed and to be honest, my workflow hasn't changed at all since then, but what I will say is that clip versions are kind of the icing on the cake for this workflow because what this allows me to do, for example, is I can select everything and then based on what we learned in the last video, let's make sure we're sitting on a grid boundary, I'm going to separate all the audio events. So now I have a distinction between a block of events that belongs with the verse and a block of events that belongs with the chorus. Now, in this case, I'm going to right click and I'm gonna choose audio and we're going to create a new clip version. Now, when we create a new clip version, now we have a one indicated on these events over here and we have a two indicated over here. So what does this mean? Well, it means that as opposed to having to do a transient detection on the kick and the snare tracks individually and dial in something that works for the whole entire performance, now with the versions, I can work in sections. So what does this mean? Well, I would basically pull up my kick track and then I can really hone in on the threshold markers in terms of making sure that I have everything that's added, but I don't have too much. For example, my old philosophy was that I'm gonna crank it up and I'd rather have too many than too little. But now I can adjust these transient detection points, for example, for the kick track, okay? And then I will do the same for the snare. This is at 80%. But for example, now I can just you know, dial this in and it's very easy for me to see to make sure that I'm getting the right amount. Now these, because they're different versions, these can have different figures. So this is at 66 right now. If I pull this down and then just dial it up, maybe I don't need to be at 66. Maybe I only need to be at 54 because we could be having a completely different style of groove and we don't need the same threshold in terms of our sensitivity and how this is detecting the transient points, right? So now we can do all these sections individually and I'm just dialing them in and wait till I have everything that I need. Okay, that looks good. And then when this is done, it's just a matter of the exact same thing we were doing before. I'm creating a group, we'll go drums. And now at this point, now that I have a group active, these, bend marker settings are seen as being independent because we've used clip versions versus just using the same parent file in the clip list or in the file browser. So now with this case, once this is done, I can set my settings to whatever I need them to be. I'll run this, I'll select this, I'll click apply. And now we can automatically adjust between the different sections. And then of course, the last step would be to select everything. I can create a self-contained audio part. And then we have our final result. 
And then of course, if I wanted to look at the contents and make sure that everything works and everything did what it needed to do, I can just dial this in and make sure and follow along with all of these edits as needed. But a huge time saver, clip versions with respect to beat detective style drum slicing. We can now work in individual sections and each section can have individual settings in terms of where we're dialing in our bend markers and our transient detection on a per cases or per section basis. That's it for me. I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.